Now, today marks the 75th birthday of King Charles, with the monarch set to visit a food bank to launch a scheme in support of those who need help during the cost of living crisis. The king, who is 14 months into his job as head of state, reaches his three-quarter century milestone a week after opening Parliament for the first time as sovereign. Well, joining us now is our royal editor, Sarah Hewson. Uh, Sarah, we've been debating this all morning. Yes. Is it actually his, like, legitimate birthday or is it his fake birthday? Day. This is his actual birthday. Okay. It's the day he was born, 75 years Why ago. Why does a monarch have two bleeding birthdays? Uh, it's about the weather. <laughs> um, it's about the British weather. So traditionally, and this yeah. dates back to 1748 and yes. George II, and it was decided that because the parades to mark a monarch's official birthday tend to be outdoors, mm -hmm. it's not very nice to have them in November and to drag people out on the streets in November. And so they chose a date in summer for the official birthday. So the late Queen's official birthday was always in June and Charles followed suit last year and his official birthday marked by Trooping the Colour was on the 17th of June. And that's why, because but he wasn't British born weather in the, November... Was he born on the 17th of June? No, he was born on the 14th of November. Born today. Prince William... Oh, his sorry, birthday. It's November. It is November. It's June. <laughs> it's just, I do apologise. <laughs> Still on is a holiday. Terrible thing. Yeah, thanks. Um, Prince William's birthday is in June. So, so he's not going to need an official birthday oh. as well oh. as a real one. But will they give him one anyway? I Two loads of presents? So. I don't think so. No. You don't need it. Well, there we go. We should end the show there. I think we're going to top that. No, I'm joking. I'll just cut her off. Um, She's no, I'm this joking. Way. That is what we've been discussing for three and a half hours. Yes. There Sarah. you go. Uh, so, what is he actually doing today yeah. to commemorate his actual birthday? For his actual birthday, he's going to be visiting a food redistribution centre. And this is all about part of the Commonwealth, uh, the Coronation rather, food project. He wants a legacy project to mark his birthday. He says that food need and food waste are both huge issues in this country. He wants to try and bring the two together. There's something like 10 million uh, tonnes of food that goes to waste in this country. Two thirds of it could be reused. So there have already been 800 fridges and freezers distributed around the UK. And there are going to be these new food hubs, which bring together excess food Good. and charities that can then start redistributing that to people in need. An amazing initiative, really, because it's not just... I mean, I was a bit cynical the other day when I saw you was on the front page no. of the big issue. Cynicism and Nicola Thorpe yeah, but in the same sentence. Look, when a man who owns several castles and palaces but starts talking about food poverty... what did I say to you? Poverty, he can I... use his, his title and he's doing a great thing there. Yes, no, absolutely he is. I mean, he could sell it all off and say, save a lot of problems for, for the poor people oh. of the UK. However, like you say this is a, a legacy issue and it's an environmental issue as well ultimately. It's an environmental issue. Oh. Actually it's pulling together multiple strands. If you Great. think about homelessness which mm -hmm. is the yep. Prince of Wales's uh, big project, you think about uh, the environmental issues that the King campaigns on so much and poverty. It is something he's very aware of. He does care deeply about it. Uh, I hear what you're saying but what he's trying to do is use his position as a convening power to bring together the different organisations and say look there's all this food going to waste here. Yeah. There's all these people in need. Yeah. Let's sort and it out. And every credit, because I think that companies should have been doing this for a Supermarkets who make far too much money should look on in shame. Sarah Houston, we're going to have you back later in the week because we want to talk about uh, The Crown is coming out, isn't it? I've um, started watching it. It's well, you can't tell you anything about she it. Comes oh, back Thursday she, morning. Can. She's she comes back as a ghost. She comes back as a ghost. It's ludicrous, man. It's gone. You do know what happens, though, I mean. But that's like Bobby Ewing coming out the shower, and you don't even remember that, do you? No, I don't. You remember all. that, don't Is you? Is it a good scene? Oh, I love Yummy, <laughs> yummy Mummy Houston's in the building. <laughs> Oh, I love it. No, but is, is, is it a good are they series? concerned about the crown? Do you think? Um, I, I don't think the King will be watching it. Camilla has watched it in the past. I think for Prince William, it will be very uncomfortable because it is the run up to his mother's death yeah. um, and the death of Princess Diana. And I think seeing that replayed on screen will be very, very uncomfortable indeed. And as you mentioned, Diana coming back in the form of a ghost, speaking to Charles and uh, the late Queen. Um, well, see what you think. A lot of artistic licence there. I mean, yeah, we, we can't go into the detail of it. Well, because... uh, well we can. We know that that's uh, know that happening. Um, and, uh, yes, there is a lot of artistic licence. Maybe that's quite a useful device for the mm. royal family because it does remind people that this is fiction <laughs> rather real. than yeah. a documentary. Um, and also, I can't get through a, a, any royal segment without asking, do you think that um, Prince Charles or King Charles will get a card today from Har Harry and her? 
Well, it will be interesting to see whether there's any kind of public acknowledgement of uh, the yeah. King's birthday. There wasn't a public acknowledgement by members of the royal family of Harry's birthday. Well, there we go. They um, started it. Oh, do me a favour. Now, I'll tell you who they started it, shall I? I don't want anything to do with the royal family, so I'm going to go to America and sell my soul for $115 million. Don't start You'd me on that. You'd sell your soul for less, Jeremy Of Kyle. course I would, and so would you. <laughs> and by the of way, course I would. Of course we all would. No, but honestly, I've always said it. Sorry, I won't change. Absolutely supported them in saying, I don't want to be in that goldfish bowl, but you can't go and talk about press intrusion and sell your soul. Do you think that's ever reparable? No, wrong word. Repairable. That relationship? Um, I think the king would like it to be repaired and is perhaps more willing to forgive than William. The mm. difficulties are that um, Harry and Meghan have spoken out about both Camilla yeah. and Catherine, and sure. I think that is where a lot of the damage has been done. Have they uh, said happy birthday, uh, William and Kate? Well, I haven't seen yet. It's Not still yet. Early Some in comments, the morning. Joy. I'll you, George, check. all they have to do is grovel and publicly apologise to every little private family detail they've uh, monetised, like malicious parasites. Don't hold back, George. No. Uh, Michael says leopards don't change their spots, nor will the royal family just because it's uh, Charles's 75th birthday. Charles has no love for Harry and his family. If he wanted to make amends, he would have done it. A long time ago. Sarah Houston, I have to cut you off, um, but please, uh, will you come back on Thursday? I will indeed. I will come back and tell you everything you need to Amazing. know about the crown. I can't wait for the gossip. You're very good. Right. Thank you so much, Sarah <laughs> Houston.